Hey guys, it's Kenna again. Um, first off, here is a face reveal. This is me. My name's Kenna, and um, I think I'm going to be recording videos like this from now on, so let me know what you guys think. Thank you again to all the new subs. Um, I was just blown away by the response on my first video. I thought it was awesome how many comments and views I got, so thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for supporting my content and being interested. Um, and what I'm doing. So I know you guys are really interested in another video. I've been working on this one for a while. I had some footage laying around um, and I'm gonna show you some of the other cool projects I've done um, with coding and HTML. For this video, I'm gonna show you how I made a memory card matching game with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript with the help of ChatGPT. So the game I'm making, if you've heard of it, is a memory game kind of like the one that is on my screen right now. I'm going to put it on screen. So basically to win the game, you have to remember all the matches of the cards and flip them over. And um, yeah, I mean, it's as simple as that. So let's get started. So to get started, I opened up VS Code and created my web project with an index.html, a style.css file, and a script.js file. Um, and then I moved over to ChatGPT and had it create the game. So first, I started with asking ChatGPT to make a memory game. Create a memory game. I'm just going to ask it that. It's not going to give me a good answer, but we'll see what happens. And then the player tries to match the cards, the pairs of the cards, by remembering the type of fruit on each card. The player is shown one card at a time and has to guess what's on the second card. If the player is correct, they score a point and continue the game. That got me started, but it was in Python and I'm working in JavaScript, CSS, and HTML, obviously, so I had it change that code for me. Create a memory game in JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. Let's see what that gets us. This version of the code was a long HTML document with internal CSS and JavaScript. So I started pulling it apart and trying to piecemeal it into um, each of my scripts. So they've created the style right now. So I'm going to take this style code. Now we can start pasting this in. <clears throat> Let's go back. So they've got their body, div class aboard, cards will be generated and added here. And then they add their script in there, which is not gonna be what I want, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put in here, save that, let's just see. <clears throat> I don't think it's gonna give me anything quite yet. Yeah. <sighs> Why couldn't I just let it finish, you know? I don't know why I had to do that. Anyways, I went ahead and had ChatGPT split it for me into three separate files because I forgot it can do everything for you. Um, and then paste it in each individually. I'm gonna say separate this code into three different files for JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. And we'll see what that does. There we go. Here's the index.html. Copy this code for CSS. And paste that in. It's the same exact thing, so that's good. That's exactly what I thought it would do. We're gonna copy this code, but oh, it's because I put these in the head. <clears throat> so maybe we'll just do this. Whoa, there it is. Wow. Inspiring, honestly. So that code worked, but there were still some glaring faults that appeared right away to me. One. Yay, B. Okay. It's not really 
<laughs> it's not shuffling them. And two. Also, when I click anywhere outside of the squares, it just makes them disappear, which is quite strange. Um, so I went to ChatGPT and asked it how I can make the card shuffle. In the JavaScript code, the, the card deck is not being shuffled every time. How do I fix this? Question mark. This means that the cards will be shuffled every time the player clicks on the game board, which is typically when the game is started. Okay. So this time it gave me a version that when you clicked on the game board, so anywhere where the cards aren't at, um, it would reset the game essentially. And I wanted to fix that as well. So I asked it to give me a button that would start the game with a shuffled deck instead of just using the game board for that. Create a start starting screen that will call the shuffle function and start the memory game instead of clicking game board I pasted that into the JavaScript code and then I realized I needed to ask for the proper HTML and CSS as well so I asked ChatGPT for each of those and then pasted them in So then I ended up with a nice looking game, but the JavaScript wasn't working with my HTML and CSS the way that I wanted to, um, to have it change the output of the screen. So whenever I click the start button, nothing happened. Um, going back to ChatGPT, I asked it to rewrite the entire JavaScript code from before. Um, and it was surprising to see that I actually did understand specifically how to update the script based on our conversation, but there were some errors again that came up. So troubleshooting some of those errors, um, I asked ChatGPT why the start screen wasn't going away when I pressed the start button and it fixed it for me. Then I had a blank screen with the body only, um, and I needed the cards to show up on the screen as well. So back to ChatGPT, I went in and I asked it to fix the issue. And it gave me the board this time, but no cards. Back again, I asked it why the cards still weren't showing up on the screen. And again. And it kind of broke the code. <sighs> so then I just told it to start over and create the script based on what we had talked about before. Fingers crossed, drum roll please. Um, these are not the changes that we discussed. So yeah, I gave me completely irrelevant code from what I wanted. So here's what I did. 
so I'm just gonna copy and paste this back in here see if it's not too long for it to understand there we go okay better after pasting in this code the cards still weren't showing up on screen and lots of troubleshooting later, I finally got the cards to show up on screen, but they weren't flipping over and showing the letters when I actually clicked on them. So that was my next issue to fix. So I went back to ChatGPT and asked how to make the cards visible, like the underside of the card with the letter. I just realized I'm dumb. You don't want to display the cards because then they can see them. Oops. Let's fix that. This is getting just so much more difficult than I thought it was gonna be. Um, every time I ask ChatGPT for something, it gives me something else different. It's ridiculous. I don't know what's going on. Um, I asked for this and it gives me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I'm um, completely not what I asked for and I'm just getting annoyed. I'm like, oh, I don't know what. Let's just fast forward a little bit. So lots of CSS um, adding and removing later. I finally got it fixed. It's not that interesting to see all the code that that entailed. So here is what I ended up with. Let's see. A, B, A, C, A, C. There we go. Cool. So there was still something missing, you know, that je ne sais quoi that comes with completing such a difficult game like a memory game or any other child game that is so difficult to complete. And that is the splash screen that says you win and you rock and validates you for the rest of your life. And also, I wanted to beg you again and again saying, hey, did you like that feeling? Do you want to feel it again? You can feel it again if you click play again. So please, just, you know, you could do it again. Okay, so let's get into it. So first I asked ChatGPT just to make me a winner screen for when all of the cards have been matched. And I pasted that code in that it gave me and nothing. So then I realized um, I needed to go through that same DOM manipulation clearing screen action that I performed at the beginning to make it show up on the screen. I asked ChatGPT for that function that clears the screen and pasted it in, and again, nothing happened, so. Endless debugging later, and I ended up with this. So, yeah, we can test this. I'm a genius. I mean, what can I say? And then uh, that screen would show up very quickly after you mash everything. So I added a wait to that function so that instead of just skipping directly to the victory screen it let you see your completed work before it just took it all away and said play again so at this point in the conversation um my chat log that i had with my chat gpt was getting so buggy that i had to just clear it out and then start a new conversation so i started a new conversation and then i pasted in my html css and javascript again and asked it to read the code and then explain it back to me so after ChatGPT proved to me that it understood my code, I got it to change the array of letters over to fruit to make it a little bit more appeasing and interesting to look at. I also added a larger amount of pairs, so it's not just four pairs that you're dealing with and make it a little bit harder. So because the game was a lot harder now to do, to complete in a reasonable amount of time, I thought I would add in some debugging features like an auto win button 
that would basically win the whole game for me, show me all the cards, and then send me to the winner screen, basically allowing me to bypass the game. And then after debugging, it looked like this. So because I didn't want the temptation of always having the auto win button sitting below, ready to be clicked and make all of your worries disappear, um, I added a toggle button on the beginning screen that would basically turn it into debug mode versus actually playing the game. So you could set that and be able to play the game or be able to bypass everything. And then I also added that to the play again screen so that whenever you won the game, you could toggle on again because clicking play again sends you back to the actual playing of the game, the very beginning, instead of the main screen. And because this video is so long now, that wraps up the first part in creating a game using ChatGPT. I hope you found it just fascinating and picked up some valuable insights along the way. But remember, this is just the beginning of a series. You're not gonna wanna miss out, so make sure you click the subscribe button and click the notification bell. This way, you'll be the first to know when the second part of my game development adventure goes live. And trust me, like I said, you're not gonna wanna miss it. And of course, if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up and any questions that you ask below, I'd be happy to answer. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.